Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Friday. Uh, end of another week and uh, we made it through kind of the storms that blew through last night. We had a big uh, huge limb fall down uh, in our yard and uh, we're gonna have to get a saw and cut it up a little bit. But uh, but anyway, uh, sorry I didn't um, uh, get the devotional uploaded yesterday. We we had a I, I got home and and uh, well, I wasn't feeling real well, so just uh, uh, feeling better now. So uh, just didn't get it didn't get it done last night. So uh, anyway, we're going deeper into scripture, deeper into Romans here. This U version uh, Bible app, Bible.com, and uh, has some good stuff for us. We've been been kind of plowing through it. Some of it's kind of kind of some deep stuff as as Paul is laying out for us just the basics of salvation and what it means. Uh, to be saved, what what how we are to respond to what Jesus has done for us, and uh, how He came and died for us, died for our sins, and He He's been talking about this uh, difference, the difference between sort of the former way, uh, the Old Testament way, it was based in the law, that we it really wasn't about that, but that's that's how they viewed it. Uh, they offered these sacrifices, even though not one drop of blood will you know, satisfy, uh, you know, God's wrath, God's judgment, uh, against us. And, and so, uh, you know, it, it was all pointing towards Jesus and, and what he would do. And, and sort of the new Testament way of, uh, you know, old Testament was more about works. Uh, well, at least that's the way they viewed it. Uh, it really was still about faith. Uh, as, as he's given us this illustration about Abraham, he's going to go deeper into that, uh, today, as we look at uh, verses chapter four, verses thirteen to twenty-five, uh, because it, it's still about faith. It's still really the same, but but they viewed it as being about you did these things to to gain salvation. You did these works, and Paul is saying it's not about works. It's about grace. It's about faith. Uh, you know, it's it's about uh, you know you putting your faith in Jesus, and then God by His grace gives us the salvation. It's it, Jesus died in our place. He was the sacrifice for us uh, so that we could be saved. So let's look deeper at this. Again, encourage you, maybe read it a few times, four times is what they suggest. Uh, we'll just read it together once and kind of walk through it as we have been. But it's Romans 4, 13 to 25. It begins this way. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Okay, so he's continuing this argument. It's not by the things that they did. It's not by their actions. It's not by them following the law. It's not by circumcision. Uh, something he talked about in the, you know, the, the previous, previous uh, verses, but it, it, it's, it's, uh, that's not how they were saved. It's not how they were, it was credited to them as righteousness. It's not how they received salvation. It was by the righteousness that comes through faith, comes by faith, by putting your faith in Jesus. Uh, they didn't have Jesus yet. They didn't know Jesus, but their trust, their faith was in God. And uh, uh, that's what brought them salvation. Uh, and it was sort of faith in what Jesus would ultimately do for them, because that's what all the Old Testament things were pointing towards uh, Jesus. Jesus is a fulfillment of those things. Verse 14, for if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing and the promise is worthless. So, so in other words, if you can be saved by, by works, if you can be saved by the law, if you can you know, work your salvation, work to get your salvation, then faith means nothing. You, you, you know, it's, it becomes something, he made the point earlier, I believe it was back in chapter 3, it might have been the first part of 4, but how he said, you know, it, it's then it's an obligation. If if you work and to receive salvation, then your salvation is an obligation. Something God has to give you because you you did the work for it. And so it's like, you know, you go to work, you go to your job, and you get paid for, you know, spending the time uh, there. And it's an obligation. Your employer is obligated to pay you because you've done the work. Well, if you do the work for salvation, then, then you're obligated that. So it's not... Uh, it's not an issue of, you know, faith means nothing and, and the promise is worthless because then it becomes an obligation. Uh, so it's an important distinction here. And he's trying to help us understand that, that, that salvation is, is by faith. Uh, it's by grace through faith. We, we put our, our, our faith in Jesus and, and 
uh, that's what counts. And that's what counted. And the point he's going to make here and say is that that's what counted for, for Abraham. Uh, he says, verse 15, because the law brings wrath. There, the, the law, uh, you know, really can't, it can't save you. And so it just brings wrath. It brings God's judgment uh, upon you. It doesn't save you. It, it just brings God's wrath. It, it tells you what you're doing wrong. He says, where there is no law, there is no, no transgression. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that's a little bit of a you know, hard one to understand what he's saying there. There's no law. There's no transgression. Uh, the sense of, you know, sort of to, to a certain extent, the law is what shows us the wrong things that we do. And, and I think that's kind of what he's getting at, you know, where there's no law, there's no transgression. You, you don't know what you're doing that's wrong. It's not, maybe not that it's not really wrong, but it's, you know, the law shows us what, what's wrong. Verse 16, therefore, the promise comes by faith uh, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. So again, he's saying again, he's pointing out very simply, it's, it's by faith. The promise comes by faith. The, the promise of salvation comes by faith. So so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. So that this gift, God gives this gift. We put our faith in him and, and then we receive the, the grace. We receive the forgiveness for, for our, our sins. Uh, and so it's, it's not just Abraham, but it's Abraham and his offspring. Uh, you know, not only to those who are of the law. In other words, there's you know, the Jews that followed the law continue to follow the law throughout throughout history but but also those who have the faith of Abraham it, it's about the faith and and it says he is the father of us all uh, in other words whether you're a Jew or a Gentile uh, we can look back to Abraham and and uh, you know he is he is our our father we look in a, he's one of the fathers of our faith we might say uh, one of the first you know, uh, ultimately pretty much the first. I mean, you can go back further than that, but, but mainly Abraham is, is the father of our, of our faith. And, and uh, whether we're Jew or Gentile or, or whatever, even the Muslims, uh, you know, kind of find their path through Ishmael and, and, and make their way back to Abraham. Uh, in verse 17, says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Uh, that's the promise that goes back to the covenant uh, that God made with with uh, Abraham. It's it's interesting because it's it's actually the second covenant. That that verse is is reference referencing the second time that God made a covenant in Genesis 17 uh, with with Abraham. And and it's it's uh, uh, it, it's interesting because it says it says it in the past tense. If you go back to to Genesis 17, it, it's I have made you a father of many nations. Now, what's interesting about that is that the first covenant was before, uh, you know, sort of Abraham had any children, but this time he has Ishmael and he doesn't have Isaac, which if you read through that story, uh, you know, God says, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bless you with this child, Isaac, and he, it's through him that my covenant will go. And I, I don't know, that's one of those things that's always been kind of hard to understand Ishmael, the whole situation with Hagar and, and how that, uh, happened and why that happened and, and was it a lack of faith on Abraham's part or was it just him uh, you know thinking he'll help God out or, or what what's going on there uh, you know I, I don't know there's a lot a lot about that we don't fully understand but but for sure God says I'm going to work through this I'm going to give you this son and and so so really I mean he has this Ishmael but he doesn't have Isaac yet he's promised Isaac in this at this this time uh, but he says, I have made you a father of many nations. Now, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's past tense. And that's what God said to Abraham. But, but he, he's not there yet. Uh, and, and so that tells me, it tells me there's a lot of faith that goes on here. God is calling Abraham to have faith, to trust him, that he is going to supply this, this son. He's 99 years old. And he says, you know, can a hundred year old, cause it'll be a hundred years, you know, he'll be a hundred years old before the baby's born. And, and he says, you know, is that even possible? Uh, but God says, yes. And, 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 
you know, God, it says there, I made you a father of many nations, which he really hadn't yet, which tells me it had to be faith. It was based on faith that God was going to do it. Uh, so I think that's an important distinction in this passage. So, so let's keep going. It says, he is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. He believed in God. He put his trust in God. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Uh, in other words, uh, there's, well, there's a lot going on there too. Uh, you know, the God who gives life to the dead. And we know that's, he, you know, brought Jesus back to life. Uh, Jesus was dead and, and, and returned to life. And not just that, he calls into things, being things that were not. He's the creator of all things. Uh, you know, he, he didn't uh, take this and that and put it together and make something. He, he created everything. And it's all made by him. And that just shows who he is and how, how great he is. That's really the point here I think Paul is getting at. Uh, and, and that's who our God is. That's who our Father is. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, uh, in whom we he believed, but not only him, but us. Uh, verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Uh, Abraham believed. He had Isaac. Uh, Isaac, you know, in the, the family tree was started, uh, moves forward, and... and uh, Really not just them, but but we all are included in that. Uh, it says, verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Made no sense uh, that, that he would have a child. Uh, he's 99 years old, or he would be 100 years old. It says, since he was about 100 years old and Sarah's womb was also dead, uh, no way that they should have a child. You know, and, and there's no reason to believe they would have a child. It says, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Uh, this God, this creator who, who creates things out of nothing, uh, you know, calls into being things that are not. And, and he, he could do it. And he believed, Abraham believed. And it says, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone. And this is a key for us. It is written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. Uh, if we believe, if we put our trust in him, it will be credited to us as righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Uh, you see, you know, that's, that's how we believe, if we believe that uh, that he raised Jesus from the dead, then we it will be credited to us as righteousness as well. It's all about belief. It's not about works. It's not about circumcision. It's not about the law. It's not about any of those things. It's all about putting our faith in Jesus, our trust in Jesus. And it says, he has delivered over to death. He was delivered over to death. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification uh, so that we could be saved so that we can know uh, the wonderful grace of God. And it's amazing grace that saves us. Uh, you know, we were still wretches. Jesus died for us. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And it's just another, again, this passage just gives us a little better picture, a little bigger picture of, of what all this means. And, and Paul is just building an argument here in this letter to the church in Rome to, to help them understand salvation and what it means, how incredible it is that Jesus came and died for us. Well, let's pray together. Lord, uh, thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for helping us put our faith in you, our trust in you. And Lord, if there's anyone watching today that doesn't know your grace, uh, has not put their faith in you, that you would help them to do that today. Uh, because there's no better way to live. There's no better way uh, to, to go through this life than to, to follow you, to live for you, to trust you, to put our faith in you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Lord, continue to be with those that are hurting today, those that are in, in need of a, a touch from you. Lord, just uh, bring healing. Uh, thank you for being with Marilyn yesterday in her surgery. Thank you that she's doing well. We just continue to lift her up, though, as she recovers. Uh, be with other needs, Lord. You know, you know each one. You are faithful. You are good. We give you praise today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with another devotional. But uh, you have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you later. Be sure and join us this weekend if you can. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, Saturday evening service. We're planning maybe for some changes. We'll not have a Saturday evening service next week. This week we will be. But uh, uh, we'll just be having the one service, our, our day of remembrance on the 6th. So be sure and join us for that if you can. But, but be here Sunday if you can, and, or we'll be online. Uh, you have a great weekend. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.